One more minute and we can start. Okay. Yeah, so maybe start now. So I think we can start now. Do you want to start? Yeah. Just say, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Just say your name, where you work, so open to your summer school if you want to get to talk about. It's the beginning of the year. Tom, maybe I can show that slide with from your presentation. Yeah, it's so now we can start. Hello again. My name is Krzysztof Dyba. I'm PhD student at Adam Mickiewicz University in Environmental Sciences. And I work here, so very nice to see you in my faculty. And this is the workshop uh, Unsupervised Classification, aka Clustering of Satellite Image for Summer School, Geo Open GeoHub Summer School. And yeah, and I prepared tutorial. We will discuss how to make clustering in R. We'll use Terra package and Landsat A data set. Yeah. So let's start. I hope everyone download data because, as you know, we have, we have yesterday some issue with the internet connection. I mean, too many people. And, yeah. and if you didn't download uh, uh, tutorial, I mean, this file, especially this file, clustering that RMD, please do it now. You can click. Uh, you got uh, this link for this repo uh, Ariel, but uh, I can show. So. If you don't have that file, now is the time to download. Click cloud code and download zip. In that way. And one important info: this session is practical. So I show you how do how read uh, raster data, how process uh, raster data. So cropping, masking, scaling data. Now we'll talk about uh, modeling, do clusterization. And uh, the final step will be uh, prepare a composition, prepare a plot. Yeah. We'll get as a result a map. Okay. A link. For data set is Google Drive or Zenodo, but I think it uh, be hard to download now. But I hope you have a date on the disk already. 
Yeah, that might be right. Just fine. So of course you have to unzip this uh, file archivum. <laughs> yeah. And there is this file cluster clustering.rmd. Yesterday, Robin showed you that you can create our studio project. You can do it, of course, or just run this file. Okay. It's okay. Do you see that font size? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Na biało? Okay. 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 But of course, you have that file that that some file on the your computer. So, yeah. okay. So that step we can skip that acquisition because I think you you already have that file. So I have a question to you. Do you have experience using Terra? Which package do you use for special analy analysis for raster processing? Terra, stars, like Edzer, or raster, stars, Terra? Who is the stars? Who is the stars? Raise your hand. Oh. <laughs> so many stars. And oh. raster or, or Terra? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So do you know this package? Nice. So we can load now this package, library Terra. And, and, and. If you open that uh, folder with data with raster, you will see that we have seven raster, seven layers, yeah. and one uh, Go package layer with vector layer yeah. and file with metadata but we are not interested in and in first step we have to load data but before we must uh, specify what files we want to load yeah there is dedicated function and r list files and we have to specify uh, folder data slash data, a pattern argument, uh, which files uh, uh, with, with, uh, with extension, diff extension, and we wanna provide uh, full uh, paths uh, of this of files. Yeah. And I think everyone uh, know how to use uh, R Markdown. This is uh, interactive notebook, so you have text here, chunks, uh, code chunks, and just click uh, green arrow to execute code. Yeah. It's pretty simple, I think. Yeah. So you would like to load uh, band one, two, three, four, yeah, but all seven bands, spectral bands. 
and we can use from Terra package function Rust to load. In Raster, you you have a conception of Raster stack. Uh, Raster, yeah, Raster stack function. In Terra, there is only one function Rust to load multi-layer Raster. Right. And what we get? What is the name of this object, that class? Yeah, exactly. And now we printed some attributes, metadata of this raster, spot raster, and we can see dimensions, yeah, how many rows, columns, layers, resolution, what is resolution? Well, this resolution. Thirty? Yeah. In meters, yeah. We have also information about extend, coordination, reference system, UTM, it's on thirty three. Paths to the files, names of bands, yeah. and minimum and maximum values for but yeah. So in that way, using names function and object landsat, we can print names of bands. As you can see, they are pretty long. So of course we can use shortened names. to generate a sequence of letter and uh, number. We can do it that way. We want to first letter B, and numbers from one to seven, because we have uh, bands like that. Yeah. So, uh, we can print new names. Yeah. So. Instead of these long names, we now have that short. And probably you know that every band you can uh, name by uh, spectral band. Yeah, like blue, red, green. So of course we can change names in that way yeah, using that. That true names, let's say. Yeah. Ultra blue, blue, green. Red, infrared, short wave, wave uh, infrared, one and two. Yeah. We can use number, letter and number, or full name, so like that. Yeah. Two different ways to do to, to name that spectral bands. Okay, so no, now we know how to load raster data. Uh, we have also vector data. And do you remember, do you know uh, which function used to load vector data in Terra? Vect? Yeah, it's true. So for raster data, we have the de dedicated uh, function Rust. If you, if you want to load vector data, there is function Vect. Yeah. To load vector data, we use that function vect. Of course, we have also specify path to the file. And after that operation, what kind of object we get? What, what is the class? Spot vector, yes. And what type of geometry we get? Yeah, it's polygon, yes. Uh, how many polygons? One is correct. And uh, uh, do we have some additional attributes, columns? No, null. Huh? If you had more layers in this your package, do you would uh, specify which one in, in the back in this, in this function? Okay. Yeah, you can uh, do that. Huh? 
if you want to import uh, function for this package, yeah? No, I mean, if you have more layers inside your geo package. Um, okay. Yeah. It, it would be this function. You can use that argument, layer. You have two layers, you can specify name of, or name of one, yeah, to select one. Okay. Ah, so now I have additional spacey question, as it is not here, but for vector data, what do you prefer, SF or Terra? Because Terra, also use uh, geos at backend, but do you have uh, which one do you prefer, a server or Terra for vector data? Yeah. And could you tell why? What is the reason? Are they similar or not? As SF you can, for example, use with tidyverse. But for Terra, there is package tidy Terra. So processing, I think, is similar. Syntax can be similar to, but maybe do you learn uh, SF before? And that is why. Yeah. OK. Or maybe some another reason. <coughs> uh, easy syntax. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And like in raster, we have also information about extent, you know, source to file, and uh, coordinate reference system. <coughs> and do you see any difference between raster data? And vector data. If you do some GIS analysis, uh, you should think about one thing, and yeah, you have idea what is different. You can uh, check out the laptops because yeah, yeah, exactly. We have two two different. Yeah, this is Polish reference system, but for the raster data, we have uh, worldwide. Yeah, UTM zones. Nice. So how we can address that problem? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So in Terra, probably you know that function project to transform uh, CRS. Yeah, and uh, we only uh, have to do uh, give that uh, name of object. This is that is poly. And the uh, second argument is uh, CRS, which will now use. And now we can see that object named Poly has got that CRS, three to six, three fee. And this is the same like uh, Landsat object raster data. Okay, and if you are a GIA specialist, probably you wanna see that data on the map. So of course we can use function plot you know, to plot the data, visualize visualize data. Yeah. Here I define some color schema, gray colors, and we can uh, use the simple fun function without any arguments. Landsat using on Landsat object. And by default, uh, we get every spectral band. Yeah, every spectral band is plotted. Ultra blue, blue, green, red, etc. But we can use select only one band. For example, in this example, it will be uh, near infrared. Yeah. So 
if you uh, provide uh, raster name object with squares, yeah, number it will be uh, five fifty layer. We got on the near bounds. And in the next step, we can also add polygon. You have to run uh, all this chunk in one in one run. And now, now we can see uh, Poznan. Yeah. It's not city, but uh, county, and yeah. This extent of county. Okay. So now we know how to load raster data, vector data, how to some uh, simple plots with multi layers, one layer uh, with polygon. Second stage stage is about raster processing. I will show you how to crop raster, mask raster. Uh, do data scaling because this is very important. Uh, I will talk more in why, but yeah. Everything is okay. Do you have any problems, questions? Okay, so we can go to the next part. Mm -hmm. So we have raster data. Polygon data, and we want to crop raster to this extent of polygon. Which uh, function we can use? Do you know? This is the same like in, in raster, similar is in stars. How crop data in R? Yeah, yeah. What, fun what function you can use? Yeah, crop. Yeah, this is very simple. We want to do crop, so the name of function is crop. Yeah. And if you you can use F1 to see documentation or just write here, crop. Maybe let's do this. So I used plot uh, crop uh, in that way, and uh, can compare with extent of polygon. As you can see, this is not crop. Yeah, we still have values outside polygon. Do you know why? No. Yeah. Actually, uh, crop, but uh, didn't last. Yeah, exactly. This. Uh, correct answer because raster data is matrix in fact and we are cropping to boundary box so we are uh, we get uh, uh, square yeah and if we wanna delete values uh, outside the polygon in real in fact we have to do masking so uh, in left corner we have to mask to assign an i an i value to to delete this yeah so let's try. You can uh, do it uh, in two ways. You can use uh, first uh, function crop and second function mask. Yeah, it's a separate uh, function to masking, but you can also, and I think it will be simple to use one line. Crop argument mask równa się 
equals to true. Yeah. And now it's fine, yeah? So the situation is that we actually mask values outside polygon, yeah? This is NA, 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 uh, value, 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 some value, NA, 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 et cetera. This is how masking works. Okay. This is the result of cropping and masking yeah, the polygon. Okay. So now next step, we want to would like get some information about our rasters, uh, get some uh, statistics, so we can use uh, Samara function. In Bayser, you you can use also this to. Uh, to get statistic about vectors, uh, matrix, yeah. summary Landsat, yeah. And for every band, spectral band, we get statistics minimum, first quadril, median mean, first quadril, max, uh, number of uh, uh, missing values. And I have next question. Uh, is somebody uh, here interested in remote sensing? Okay. So could you tell us, uh, is that correct uh, data set or incorrect? If you look at values. Incorrect? Uh, now we did some get some uh, statistics from raster from uh, spectral bands and you have in columns band uh, one ultra blue blue yeah yeah exactly uh, change to to what yeah reflectance yeah and the issue is that if you download data from USGS, Earth Explorer, Copernicus repositories, you will uh, get the this, uh, get data in uh, integer format. Yeah, and uh, we have to scale data to uh, float number numbers to get uh, reflectance values. Yeah. Best, uh, yeah, you should read this article on Wikipedia, for example, but as you can see, reflectance is from range zero to 100%. So zero means that the object absorb all the light and 100% means that uh, it's uh, reflect that out, yeah? And you can use uh, not person, but uh, range from zero to one. Yeah. So as you can see, we have in ultra blue band values like 4,000, 8,000 uh, in uh, near infrared, 16,000. So this is not reflectance. And our task is to scale the data. There are, uh, if you use, for example, Landsat, no, this is only an example, but uh, if you want to use uh, Sentinel, you have to read documentation because in documentation you will find information about formula to scale data to from integers to float numbers. Yeah, You have to read documentation before you do, do, do uh, some analysis. Yeah? This is pretty important. And there is formula but you don't see it, I don't see it too. But the idea is that you have some big value like 16,000. Next, you have to multiply this value by this vector. This is scalar, but yeah, scale factor. Yeah. 
and next minus zero dot two. Yeah, this offset. Yeah, these equations they are specific for the different types of data sets, and they're always part this is only for the Landsat. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, one uh, note this is only for uh, uh, spectral bands for uh, temperature bands you you have a uh, different formula yeah you can use this formula only for spectral bands from one to, to seven yeah. if you if you wanna use thermal sensor thermal bands there is another formula yeah. could you speak louder where did you get that formula from the beginning? Yeah, exactly. You, I, I want to show you how it's called thermal Yeah, yeah. Thermal bands are the Yeah. In Google, you can, for example, write SCAL term, thermal data Landsat. Let's check first link. And for spectral band surface reflectance, you have this formula, and if, if you want to use um, temperature, formula is like that. But if you wanna, if you don't wanna use Landsat, but you wanna use Sentinel, in Sentinel it's simpler formula because uh, uh, just divide by uh, ten thousand. Yeah? It's simpler formula to go, to get the reflectance. Okay. Do you understand that the, this concept or this this is difficult? Difficult? Or yeah. 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 If you have question, yeah, you can ask. Yeah. So, uh, the, the aim is to use the, the, this kind of data for modeling finally, for, for example, clustering. Yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> if, you, if you don't do the BS gaming, in such a way you can use the original data because we are looking at the variation of the data so it has effect on the final result uh, if you want to do clustering it will be problem because um, in clustering you very often use euclidean distance so it should be scaled but for machine learning i see i saw many papers when researcher didn't scale data just put uh, original values uh, and it's working, yeah. But if you wanna interpret the results, you have to uh, scale the data, yeah. Because this is uh, doesn't mean anything, yeah. You should uh, get some values between range zero to one yeah, to interpret the results. Okay. And one more thing, uh, I wrote some text so you can write uh, in home. Yeah, signal time to to understand that. Yeah. So we know we have to scale the data using this formula. It's very simple. In Python, probably you should uh, write loop, but uh, in R. In Num NumPy in Python 2, uh, operation on matrix are vectorized. So if you you can uh, write only one formula and it, it will be uh, used for all bands. Uh, you don't need to write write a loop, but only just one just one line and yeah, it will be okay. Yeah. I was wondering about your negative data. Yeah. Why? Like, uh, some Issue in data, I think, because uh, as I said before, the spectral values should be from range zero to one. Now we do some scaling and uh, look at this. And this is very often situation in re remote sensing because uh, we have satellites in space. And the main problem is atmosphere because you have some uh, dust, uh, you have to do some atmospheric correction, and this is not perfect. There will always be some problems with data, and our task is to find problems and somehow address problems with data. Yeah. Yes, but also, it's not so personally, what I'm doing is uh, 
trying to exclude from the loop repository. No. Uh, when I am mapping, like the file of the map, it's missing those pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, maybe could you suggest? Yeah, I want to talk about this. So, you started this topic. So you uh, told us you are uh, replacing these values with missing values. Yeah, if this value value is negative, you are assigned an A. Yeah. yeah. So you can do this. Try the second step to trim. Yeah, to maximum and minimum range. The values will be in data set, but they can be incorrect. Yeah, but you don't uh, exceed that range yeah? this is the second way subtract the difference and divide by the maximum value then you will also get but then you are rescaling also the range so this is like a third method but yeah that's all what you need then those three methods probably are something that you need to decide by your own what is the best for you yeah, I want to add that every method has some disadvantages because if you removing, as you said, you are uh, the data is deleted, so you have wide gap in that place in the map. Yeah, but if you wanna replace, you still uh, got some uh, incorrect values, but they don't uh, exceed the maximum and minimum. Yeah. You have to check, test, and uh, choose correct method. Yeah. And uh, one important uh, thing from my experience: uh, water is near to the zero. Reflectance of water is near uh, to the zero. But uh, if we are analyze satellite images, we, there is very often situation that uh, the values of water bodies is uh, below zero. Yeah, and if we use that method, we remove lakes, rivers. Yeah, so it can be problematic. The third? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure because uh, they can be some problems not only with water, but you use just uh, check if yeah. I don't have uh, correct answer what to do, but you have check. Why not use the lens that you use to show quality image to mask out pixels? Yeah, use it. Yeah, I'm doing it in my work, but I um, talking now about uh, simple things. Yeah, but this is correct approach. Yeah. There is. Lots of guys can be telling you the pixels shouldn't be included in analysis because the qualities before you can just read that through the layer. Yeah, but still, there, there is problem with the that values uh, below zero or yeah, above one. Yeah, yeah. and uh, second thing uh, that product with pixel quality is not perfect too because in Sentinel there is very often uh, problem issue that. Uh, some pixels are, uh, for example, specified as water, but uh, in real they are uh, ground. Yeah, so pixel marks are not ideal to. Uh, so this is pretty complex topic. Yeah. So, but uh, very good suggestion. But I didn't show that there because yeah, we are doing simple uh, things. And remember, this is only introduction. Yeah, I'm just talking about simple topics. So. Yeah, let's test this first method. If you wanna, you can also check the second method. Yeah, and now we prepared the data set for analysis. It's not ideal, but yeah, we did something. And now we can we can create composition from three layers, three bands. It can be uh, RGB composition, red, uh, green, blue bands, or we can uh, do CRR in false colors. Well, it's, that's that one. And uh, in Terra, we have a function for that plot RGB. Yeah. 
let's see, Namus. And uh, we have bands in that order, ultra blue, blue, green, red, near, sphere, sphere. But in that function, we have to specify order of red band, green, and blue, yeah, that way. And this is the result. Uh, we can see anything because this is black. Yeah. In Terra, we have additional, in this function, we have additional argument like stretch. And this uh, will improve colors. Okay. Well, now it's better, yeah? Previously, uh, all the image was black, and now we can see CT. Poznań, forest, croplands. So this, this is how we can uh, prepare composition, RGB composition. Uh, do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or somebody? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. So we transfer, convert the, the data from reflectance, removed uh, outliers, and now we can go to the clustering for data modeling, uh, training model. Yeah. And in this workshop, I will show you the simplest method, Camins. It's very simple, but very popular. Not the best, but yeah, we are learning now. Yeah. And Cummings model you can find in this package cluster. So let's load this package. And you must now know that uh, almost machine learning uh, models. Uh, uh, if you want to train some model, we have to provide data in matrix form, like matrix object or data frame. And we have convert raster to matrix. Yeah. In Terra, we have two functions to do, us, do it, like values or as matrix, but we can use this values because it's okay. Yeah. So, so we wanna know uh, change this raster object, spot raster into matrix, yeah, because yeah, in fact uh, rasters are matrix, but we we gonna get this um, matrix as our object, yeah. So let's use that function values. Yeah, and we can print the number of pixels, yeah, all number of pixels in this raster. Okay. In if you use our studio, we can click on this object, math, to see how it looks like, or use that. Uh, function uh, view. Yeah. As I told you, uh, we must have values outside polygons, so we have many none, 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 none. Many, many. But But somewhere in the uh, center of polygon, we get values, yeah? In columns, we have spectral bands, V1, V2, uh, ultra blue, blue, et cetera. And in rows, we have uh, pixels, cells of, of raster. 
Okay. In columns, we have spectral bands. In rows, we have pixels, cells. Okay. And uh, on this stage, if you want to do some modeling, you will go, get error. Do you know? Do you have any suggestion why it wouldn't work? Won't work? Yeah. What is the, what the problem with that data set? Yeah, exactly. Many models uh, don't accept uh, missing values. So we have to delete them. Yeah. Uh, th there is very simple function like an omit. Yeah. Do you know that function? Yes. Yeah. So we can use to remove missing values from matrix. Yeah. Let's create new object mat omit with our missing values. And do you see any difference uh, between object mat and object and mat omit? Yeah. Yeah. Is what is the difference? Yeah, number of rows. Yeah. Basically, we deleted uh, missing values. Yeah. So now this uh, mat omit is smaller. Yeah. The number of rows is smaller. Okay, I told you we will use Kamins, but there is a link for uh, task view on CRAN. This is about the cluster analysis, which model you can use for cl clustering. And this list is pretty long for clustering during uh, past years. There are proposed many, many, many different clustering models, methods, like uh, hierarchical clustering, density clustering. Yeah. So we can choose many, many models to, to clustering. OK, but uh, in this example, we use Kamins. And what is important? Uh, we have algorithms uh, stochastic and deterministic. Do you know the difference but between them? Stochastic and deterministic? What is the difference? If model algorithm is stochastic, what does it mean? Yeah. yeah. So we want to make our analysis uh, uh, repeatable. So we have to set that seed. Yeah. Because if you, we use that function without uh, setting a random seed, every iteration, every room will return different results. Yeah. This is problematic if you want to. Uh, repeat your analysis or send to your uh, colleague and uh, he will die or she get that uh, same result. But if you don't set that, you don't use that function, he or she will get different results than, than you. Yeah? So it's pretty important. And, and, and OK, so we can do clustering, do the magic. Yeah, this function is pretty uh, simple, uh, like previous, because we have only to give that specified uh, matrix object without missing values. And in advance, we have to specify number of cluster, number of groups. Yeah. And uh, by the way, do you know what this, we are doing with this clustering? Did you read article? Yeah. Introduction, some, yeah. What is clustering? What are we doing now? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. We wanna find similar pixel uh, cells of grid and group them into similar groups, and groups should be uh, separate. Yeah, we have group one which uh, can represent forest, and we wanna create second group which will represent water, for example. Yeah. Yeah. What is center is equal to six million? Uh, number of groups. Yeah. Center is center is number of groups. You can uh, check out also documentation. Cummings centers number of clusters. Yeah. Okay. So after using that function, we trained created model, Cummings model for clustering, and we can print information about that model. Yeah. We specify six. Yeah, but how, how do you define uh, centers? Like we define we get six for clusters and that's yeah. Are you mean that yeah, this is only example because uh, in the next part I wanna uh, from you that uh, you should uh, check the different numbers of centers, but this is only example. Yeah, your question is how we can uh, define specify the best optimal number of cluster. So this is very hard question and nobody can answer it, but you can use some um, expert knowledge or pretty uh, best, better way, I think, will be use some validation metrics. And this is next section. Yes. The functions to do optimal numbers. Yeah, uh, using some using some metrics, yeah. So it does by iterations and look at some entropy in hmm? Yeah. And, uh, but sometimes it, sometimes it finds like the lowest point, but sometimes there's no you can have uh, multiple lowest points. Yeah. So if you search from like, you say yeah. I want to have in five and I don't know, 50 classes, then you find one uh, optimum. And then you say, I want to have between five and 100, and then find another one. Yeah. So you can do a bit hidden. Okay. I'll pick yeah. it then before uh, lateral I mean, finding optimum number of clusters will be done before lateral and then we give the same value. My approach is uh, do uh, several models with different number of class and find that will be uh, looks the best because you can only use metrics, but you have also checked by yourself what looks good, what is good. But, but wait, I uh, talk more next minutes. Yeah, and we get that model. We can print information about model. As you can see, we have six clusters because we defined this argument centers in advance to, to get six groups, clusters. And the next information is about how many objects belongs to first cluster, second, third, yeah. and next. And next important thing, we if also table table with uh, centers of clusters. So we have cluster one, group one, and we can uh, see that group uh, has got pretty high values in spectral bands. Yeah. Uh, zero five in blue, ultra blue, zero six in blue. Yeah. And uh, in compared to uh, group two, there is only uh, zero two, zero two, yeah, smaller values. Yeah. This table with uh, centers of groups clusters. Yeah. Okay. 
The third object is, of course, vector with clusters. We are especially interested in it because this is vector with classification clustering results. Yeah. So to to get this uh, vector, we have to use dollar sign and centers. Yeah. Not centers, but clusters. Yeah. yeah. I only printed uh, first six, uh, six uh, elements, so that means first pixel uh, belongs to second cluster, uh, second pixel also belongs to second cluster, second cluster, second cluster, second cluster, but uh, uh, six uh, uh, pixel belongs to four. Yeah, and you get you get. These values shouldn't shouldn't I get the same as yours since it says the C or no? Yeah, you you should get exactly the same. Oh, because I did it. Yeah. You run this uh, in one in one chunk? Yeah. yeah. So let's check. And maybe uh, uh, use you are using different system operating system because some difference. Okay. Yeah, I have Windows. Yeah. <laughs> Different version of R. Yeah, I, uh, I have uh, four dot three dot one. Can you print your session info? Yeah. You also get a different result. I get my my the print of the model looks very different. What is the uh, difference? Uh, we first print the whole matrix. Matrix. Uh, are you using uh, comings from uh, that package cluster? Mister, uh, you had a question, eh? oh, but I didn't. Yeah. 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 You yeah. started talking, but yeah. No. Yeah. Was talking about that. Let's make sure. Yeah. Let's see again. So you have different output. Oh, not good. Yeah. I think what is the R? Okay. But um, yeah, we can talk uh, about this uh, after the session. Uh, I can uh, come to you and check, yeah. 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 But after the session. There is no in Not. Ah, stats, yeah, yeah. Uh, stats. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, you are right, yeah. So Nils, you can check again. Yeah, starts and comings. Okay, let's go. You ask about how to choose the best uh, model, how many, uh, groups uh, should be specified. So now we can talk about validation. Yeah, and you can write, uh, read some um, articles on Wikipedia. There are many, many uh, metrics for validation, like done index. You can open links in uh, web browser, but I want to only mention Davis Baldin index and Silhouette index. I think. The most popular is Silhouette. I use uh, it index too. Yeah, and this is uh, some um, metric to validate how good clustering is. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is discussed here. But basically, uh, in case of Silhouette index, 
the range of values is from minus one, zero to maximum one. And this is very simple. We wanna uh, this matrix uh, value of that matrix uh, as high as possible near to one. It means that clustering is good. Uh, similar objects are grouped into one cluster and cluster are separable. If you get zero value of zero for that index, that means that uh, object is uh, on the boundary of different clusters. So uh, it can belong to the cluster one as well as uh, to cluster two. Yeah. And the worst situation is when you get values uh, below zero because it means uh, object doesn't belong for that cluster. Yeah, probably should uh, be in another cluster or you should use different algorithm to improve uh, overall uh, performance of clustering or maybe define and specify a different number of clusters. Yeah. This is like silhouette the index works. Yeah. yeah. And note one thing, if you wanna uh, calculate some validation matrix, matrix in clustering, you have to create a distance matrix for every ob object, yeah, every object to every, so you get very, very, very uh, big matrix. In our case, it will be a row mat commit. Yeah, this very big number, so I think we can allocate as much memory, uh, yeah, big object memory. So we can, so what we can do to address this problem? What is the solution? We have very big object, but we wanna still calculate some metric. What do you suggest? No. Yeah, sample. Yeah. We don't have to use the uh, whole data set because we can just do some sampling to get some smaller sample and calculate distance between that object. Yeah. This, that uh, we can do it. Yeah. That chunk you can see workflow. Yeah. So we are uh, sampling this uh, stochastic. So we also need to set seed. Yeah. It's uh, one, can be one. To sample data that is dedicated in our function sample. Yeah. You also have to use argument of size. Yeah, 10,000 will be okay, but you can use 20. It should be okay too, but remember the number uh, can be so huge. Yeah. Yeah, and we draw some indexes from the whole data set. Okay. I was talking about the silhouette index. Yeah, and it comes from cluster package. Yeah, and so this is a simple function, but let's see documentation. Remember, before you use any function, read documentation yeah, because you must know how to use function. What Arguments uh, they accept. Yeah, so let's see. So first argument is uh, output from uh, cluster model, model vector with clusters, yeah. Second argument is uh, the similarity matrix. Yeah, you, we can calculate that matrix with distance, Euclidean distance using fu function dist. Yeah. And look, we don't want to do this for data set, but only for part of data set. Yeah, so we need to use indexes from this line. 
it will only use small part of data, 10,000. Yeah, not full data set. Yeah, let's run this. And we get information about uh, correctness of uh, clustering. Yeah, you can see um, first uh, cluster and silhouette uh, index equals to 0 0.24, second cluster 0 0.31, etc. And we can also you have uh, specified uh, value only for uh, cluster one, two, three, etc. But we can uh, calculate mean for a whole clustering. Yeah, we can do it that way. Just use uh, uh, mean function on this object. We want to use a third column. Yeah, and what do you think? We did some clustering, and do you think the, the result is okay? Uh, only look at this metric. Do you think this res result is okay or not? We have value 0 0.36. This good. What do you think? Right side. Are you happy with that result or, or not? If you would uh, do some project and get this this value, do you think uh, result is acceptable, or you should uh, change something, change model or a number of groups? What do you think? Hmm? Yeah, or model? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the beginning. Because uh, it is not clear to me when uh, we decided the number of clusters. When we are going to, like, we can use single index to compute the number of clusters, we are going to use to introduce in the feedings. Yeah. We have to find what we can do. There are some uh, specialized packages for doing uh, to select the model, uh, correct the number of class uh, groups. But in this approach, uh, which I show now you, we do it this way. Uh, to be honest, we don't know what uh, is the correct number, and you have to test uh, number of four, five, six, and the next step is to validate the yeah, result. Yeah, so we can do something with this, uh, assign or with a index at the beginning to find the number of clusters, and then we can find the Now you have to train model. Next is uh, to do a validation. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if you are you looking for some package, packages in R, I don't remember the names, but I think uh, community is uh, pretty advanced with solution. And there are packages uh, where you have, for example, five metric to validate, uh, 20 models to test, and uh, this iterating uh, every combination. And, uh, and uh, in the final out output, you will get the best model with best number of uh, clusters. Yeah. But, repeat, best number. Yeah, yeah, that's. Did you use uh, that before? Yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think uh, one million observation is too much, and you should uh, use uh, sample as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, if you want to check, uh, this is package, yeah, and B class. You can read some information about it. But uh, you can also see some nice article about you have different methods, elbow methods, yeah.
And we are talking about that silhouette method. Yeah, we are using this one now. Oh, sorry. There is another package, C valid. Yeah, probably you can. Yeah. There is argument to define number of cluster. It will be, it, it will check from two to 24 and different methods. Yeah, hierarchical, comings, and something. And pam, yeah. Partitioning around methods, probably. Yeah. C valid, another package for testing, validating, clustering clusters. Okay, return to our studio. So in summary, this clustering is uh, okish, not good. And we are not happy with it. But we can do one more visualization. Yeah, in this way. First cluster, second, third, yeah, four. Silhouette index, value of index for first, second, yeah. Yeah, 10,000. Uh, what? This yeah. value is less than 0 0.5. Yeah, I think uh, 0.6 is OK. Yeah. This clustering is not good. We use Kamins, but mm, this is not best uh, option. Yeah. Probably you should use different. Yeah. And yeah? It was not very good. I think that was zero. Yeah. Check first cluster. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. We have some uh, objects with the um, in, uh, silhouette index below zero. Yeah? So that means uh, they are in uh, wrong cluster. Yeah. Probably, probably they should be in different. Yeah. Zero means that uh, this is not good. This, uh, they are probably, maybe uh, can be in one cluster or second, yeah. The best option situation is that value is above 0, 0, 0.5, 0, 0.6, yeah. Per perfect will be one, yeah, but on real data set, you never get this value, yeah, so. 0, 06, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Clusters or space that stays always the same across round sub imagery. Like it's like a hyperspace with all the bands. And are there regions that always indicate that something is, for instance, cloud? Yeah, yeah. Uh, cloud are pretty easy to uh, to cluster. Water, maybe water, not this good example because I will show you water can be also very problematic. But clouds or snow are very easy to because they have very high values in all spectral bands, like uh, zero dot uh, a, for example, and it's very simple to separate them from uh, from the rest of the data set. Other things will constantly change depending on the time. Year time, uh, time analysis is uh, more complex, and I don't talk about it. But uh, mm, sand is uh, stalled in 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 time. Yeah. Of course, uh, if there is no uh, ice cover uh, during the winter, says yeah. But sand is also don't change in, in time. But I don't talk uh, about uh, time analysis. Is that? Workshop, but but maybe Eva, will you talk about how uh, spectral characteristics of objects change in in time? In yeah. 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 Nice.
Yeah. So maybe you you will be interested, but this, it will be only about forest. Yeah. This implementation part here, yeah. but you also said uh, you build a polyad uh, replacing forest. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly focused on reputation because it's the reputation, but you can use the reason to make it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay. So we uh, try the model, validate it. And the last step is interpretation. Interpretation is very hard. You need to have knowledge about remote sensing, uh, spectrometry, and some environmental uh, knowledge. And how to do it? I will try to describe whole process, how to do it, but it's hard. So after clustering using Camis, we got that vector with clusters. Yeah, two, 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 cluster, two, 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 four, two, 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 et cetera. And now we have to interpret what is two, what is four, what is three. No, three is here. Yeah, we have also one and uh, five, six, but not in this part. And my question is, how do interpretation? Do you have? Suggestion how we can do it, how interpret cluster, what is two, what is four, what what is one, what cluster represents. Again? Classes? What classes? Yeah, but uh, what group? Uh, because we 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 have group group groups, so Yes, and uh, what is uh, field obs observation in our case? Uh, louder? Some places we know what is. We have coordination. Yeah, this is one way we can go to the uh, outside and check what is in that place, but um, we are lazy and don't want to go outside. So using that data set, what we can do? Loader, please, because I don't. The green is the generation, the those models. Yeah, the but order. I mean that. Um, Digitize some points by hand by looking at the RGB image. Yeah, so yeah, we can plot uh, that uh, that picture. Mm, that picture. That picture. And do you propose to prepare map with cluster and compare with that map? Yeah. Yeah, In, yeah this is a very good approach. This is one way to do it. And second approach, uh, using statistics. Do you have an idea how we can use statistics to do interpretation? Yeah, but again. The name is the Plectons. Plectons. Uh, mm. Yeah, but uh, we have only one, one date without, uh, yeah. But mm, this is a good uh, way, but mm, not for season, not for mm, uh, time depend analysis, but we can do only for, for one, one point. Yeah? So, what tools we can use for analysis, for interpretation? Some plots, maybe? Yeah, can we use some plots? Not uh, RGB composition, but I mean some statistical plots. Well, like something box, plot. Yeah. box plot? Yeah, exactly. And, and form oh, again? Yeah. Okay. 
Ja. So. Okay. Do you know the plot, or are you using base plot plotting in R? Yeah. Both. Okay. So in this example, we use G plot too because I very like it and I think uh, plots are very nice. But of course, you can use base plot. Yeah, if you use. And 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 yeah, you need we need G plot too. And one more thing, we have to prepare data. Because you know, gplot requires the data in special uh, format. Yeah, which format? Wide, long. Again, please. Tidy. 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 Yeah, tidy. But, but I mean, we should have many columns or many uh, rows. Many rows. So, what is the name of that format? Long. Yeah. Yeah. So to create table in long format, we can use tidy R. Okay, okay. So previously we created this object mat omit, and from clustering we get that object and then dollar cluster. And now we have to bind, yeah, bind bind columns. So we will use function C bind. Gplot plot uh, in gplot we should use matrix or data frame. Da yeah, yeah. So we have to convert uh, our matrix to data frame using that function as data frame, and we get uh, that. So we have uh, every spectral band in separate column, and now we wanna go to the Long form, yeah. Do you know how we can transform curve convert from wide form to long but function? Pivot, yeah. This is very popular uh, function because in SQL they use this, yeah. yeah. Somebody use SQL that's the same function. Yeah, so pivot longer, the name of matrix, which columns. Yeah, and we will create a new column, only one, and there will be a band name. A second column will be column with values, with reflectance for uh, each, each band, yeah. Okay, one more again. Okay, do you see? Before we had that matrix, every band was a separate column. Now we have one column with band name like B1, B2, B3, etc. And uh, we have now new column with values, yeah, with reflectance for each, each band. Yeah. And of course, first column is, is with cluster because we binded it before. Okay. We can check also structure of this data set. Cluster is numeric, bound is character. Do you think we can improve that in some way? I will show it again. This is numeric. This, uh, as you can see, we have only six, 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 three, five, 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 and bands like character. Yeah. Do you think we can improve that or not? 
not not that way, but I mean, uh, can we change data type to save some memory or not? Maybe this is good already. Fact, yeah. As you can see, we have on the length unique stats cluster. We have only uh, six different uh, values in that column with cluster. And situation is similar for uh, stats band from band names. So this pro tip from me, if values uh, are duplicated, like categories, many categories for many, many, many different values, you can use uh, factor data type. Yeah. You don't have to use character and uh, numeric. You can use factor to save some memory. Yeah, and you can to convert uh, numeric or character to factor, we can use uh, function as factor. Okay, we I think now we can uh, take break. Yeah. Four minutes, so. Did you make some maps already? What? Maps. Uh, not yet, but it will be last step. Yeah, yeah but we have uh, one hour and half. Yeah. Maybe no. if somebody finds a function to optimally find number of classes in our super classification, it's a homework. So no. if you find some function search optimal number of classes, some super classification in R, so we can make a test. I found one. Okay, send it on the metal box, please. Go on in this in this uh, channel. And it's I found this method. Time spatial analysis satellite analysis like that. Eva, could you confirm what is the name of that channel on? on yeah, 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 yeah. And you can check uh, this uh, package uh, C valid or NB class. Probably they will be fine. Yeah, let's go to the break, uh, get some coffee or cake. Yeah. <laughs> 